I pointed out that this was particularly a characteristic of music. It's also a characteristic of dancing. And in the sensation of belonging with one's fellow men, in the carrying out of some significant pattern of life, uh, which I mentioned as a second sense of the world being meaningful, again, the character of this feeling is again something that is fulfilled in itself to dance is not to be going anywhere when we dance in the ballroom we don't have a destination we're just going round the room and it's in doing this it's in executing the pattern in singing the music with other people that even though this doesn't point to anything outside itself we again get the sense of meaning and this is also obviously the case so often in the satisfaction of the biological urges does one live to eat or eat to live I'm not at all sure about this I'm sure I very often live to eat because uh, sitting around a table with people I don't like eating alone and uh, enjoying food is absolutely delightful and uh, we're not thinking when we do this at least certainly I'm not that we have to eat because it's good for us and that we've got to throw something down the hatch as Henry Miller said and swallow a dozen vitamins uh, just because uh, our system needs nourishment I remember Quite recently, there was an article in the Consumer Reports about bread. And uh, there had been some correspondence and protests saying that the bread one bought, white bread one buys in the stores, is uh, perfectly inedible and lacking in nutrition. And that uh, it was much better to eat um, peasant-type breads, rough pumpernickel and things of that kind. And the experts replied that uh, our white bread is perfectly full of good nutrients and uh, there's nothing really the matter with it at all. Well, I felt like saying it isn't a matter, perhaps, of the bread being deficient in the essential vitamins. Bread isn't medicine, it's food. And one's complaint against it is that it's bad cookery. It tastes of nothing. And uh, we do tend, don't we, to look upon food so often for what it will do for us rather than the delight of, of eating it. But if... The satisfaction of biological urges is to mean anything. Surely the point of these urges is not the fatuous one of mere survival. Of, we might say, the, the point of the individual is simply that he contributes to the, to the welfare of the race. And uh, the point of the race is that it reproduces itself to reproduce itself to reproduce itself and keep going. And that isn't really a point at all. That's just fatuous. Surely the race keeps going because going is great, because it's fun. And if it isn't, and never will be, then there's no point, obviously, in going. I mean, looking at it from the most hedonistic standpoint. But then when we come to the question, what is fun? What is the joy of it? Again, we come down to something that can't very well be explained in the ordinary language of meaning, of leading to something else. And this, I think, becomes preeminently true if we think of it in theological language, that the meaning of life is God. In any of the theistic religions, what is God doing? What is the meaning of God? Why does he create the universe? What is the content of the love of God for his creation? Well, there's the frank answer of the Hindus that the Godhead manifests the world because of Leela, which is the Sanskrit word for play. And this is likewise said in the, uh, in the Hebrew uh, scriptures or the Christian Old Testament in the book of Proverbs where there is a marvelous speech by the divine wisdom, Sophia, which in describing the function of the divine wisdom in the creation of the world 
The world, in other words, is a manifestation of the wisdom of God. A wisdom uses the phrase that in uh, producing men and animals and all the creatures of the earth, wisdom is playing. And it was the, the, the delight of wisdom to play before the presence of God. And when it is likewise said uh, in the scriptures that the Lord God created the world for his pleasure, uh, this again means, in a sense, for play. And certainly this seems to be what the uh, angels in heaven are doing according to the traditional uh, symbolic descriptions of heaven. They are ringed around the presence of the Almighty, calling out, Alleluia, 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 through all eternity. Well, Alleluia uh, may have meant something originally, but as it's used now, it doesn't mean anything except, uh, well, in our own slang, whoopee. It's a, an exclamation of nonsensical delight. And it was Dante in the Paradiso who described the song of the angels as the laughter of the universe.